<laughs> so we'll call the meeting to order of the Lewis Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee on May 24th. Members present, Glenn Dunnington, myself, John McGovern, Chip Davis, and Mary Roth. And our city council rep is Tim Ritzert and Chief Tom Spell is here from the police and our staff interface person is here, <laughs> Janet Reeves. All right, item one on the agenda. Did every, everyone read the minutes? Questions, comments? Everybody happy with them? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. So could I have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve the minutes. I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed, so that motion carries. First item on the agenda, Lenny Richardson from Pedago Bikes wanted to come in and make a statement. Um, if you remember him, he came into the March meeting and sat there as a result of the news coverage that came out after the January meeting. Apparently a reporter from one of the TV stations physically went to his store to ask him what was going on after the January meeting. Anyway, he asked to be on the agenda. So he is number one on the agenda. Unfortunately, last evening, I got an email from him saying something else has come up and he will not be able, he might not be able to attend. So assume, given that he's not here, I assume he's not coming. Right. He did send a statement he would like to be read at this meeting and Chip has agreed to read it. Very good. Uh, good evening, Mr. Fisher. Just writing to let you know that something has come up that may prevent me from being at the meeting tomorrow night. There's a chance I could make it and I will try to do so. If I'm unable to attend, can you read this statement? Thanks to the committee for giving us a chance to comment at this meeting. We want to make sure that people get a chance to hear some of the positive things we know about e-bikes, at least what we have learned at Pedago Lewis. Many of our customers with knee and hip issues are now able to enjoy riding a bike again. Some of our customers with heart issues are able to ride a bike again. Some of our customers who have lost some of their endurance can enjoy riding a bike again. Many of our customers do not use the electric portion of the bike until they need to. They purchase the bike to get exercise and have comfort in knowing there are assist features available to them to help them get home if they need it. Many of our customers do use pedal assist features as they go out to enjoy the outdoors. Many of our customers have purchased to avoid traffic and to enjoy the wonderful trails of the area. Most recently, we have had many customers purchase to avoid gasoline prices as they continue to rise. As a manager of the Pedago Lewis store, I really want the committee to understand that there, if there are problems on the bike paths that need enforcement, don't blame e-bikes. All of our bikes do a max out at 20 miles per hour, but non-electric bikes with performance riders go much faster than that and pass our bikes all the time. Whatever we can do to help educate all people on trail etiquette, we will do. We do take group rides and show our customers the proper way to pass and ways to be safe on the trails. We also need to show walkers and walkers with dogs how to be safe on the trails as well. In closing, we have wonderful customers who are enjoying the outdoors again and loving it. Don't take that from them. Thanks, Lenny Richardson, Pedigo Lewis. Thank you. Comments from the members? I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one. Um, since I brought this to the table about e-bikes and all that was was a suggestion and make people aware that e-bikes were becoming more and more uh, around town, on the trails and everywhere. No more than that. We as a committee, as far as I know, and I can speak for myself, had not taken a stance one way or another 
And uh, through my years involved with other committees, I've endorsed uh, providing parking for bikes and as well as the education part of it. So. Could we link the next, that we have an agenda item to report from the me members who have talked to the bike shop owners. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could just join that to this, because this is like, I went to speak to that gentleman and uh, Chip and I went out to talk to the guys. And I thought, I'd like to make a statement because it was my clip that was shown on the news. Okay. John, can you just make sure you're speaking into the microphone? It was my clip that was shown on the news. Was that? And it was taken out of context because we had the original discussion was about speed limits on the trail for every bike, not just electric bikes. Mm -hmm. And was there a posted speed limit or not? And we were not singling out electric bikes. I just want to make that very clear. And that's, and I'm fine with electric bikes on the trail, as long as they're within the state guidelines of what electric bikes can be. Right. Ask a question, please. Do, is it my understanding uh, that Mr. Richardson has represented that he's, his bikes are don't exceed 20 miles per hour? And is that a level two bike? Is that correct? Does anyone know? I'm not sure, but I believe so. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I just wanted that clarification because there are three levels. As three I to three levels, and I, I, I want to say that's a level one. I could be oh. incorrect, and they progress from there with the level threes being, I believe, 28 or more. Okay, so level two so it comes somewhere between 20 miles be, per hour and level. Okay, right. thank and you very much. Meet the requirements of the current statute okay. in Title 21 of what defines an electric bike. Okay. Just 20 miles an hour and 750 watts. That did not change. Okay, thank uh, you very much for that clarification. Fine. Go ahead and we'll move parts of the next item up. That's fine. Yeah, yeah so uh, reporting from the members who have talked with. So right. the- um, So can, just for people that are following yeah. along, the, you're now moving to item D, <laughs> D4. Yes, yeah. then we'll bounce back. Okay, I just uh, I just want to make it yeah. I just want to make it clear because we do have people you know in yes, in good. Zoom. Yeah. So this is uh, moving up from <laughs> Mr. Richardson's comments oh. to the committee and moving from to D four. Okay, would it be better just to wait until we get to D four to continue? That's fine. You you. No, you can do that, okay. but if you're changing the agenda around, you do need to, you know, make that statement at the beginning of the meeting. So. Okay, so I th thought it would sort of related to what the man said. So, so the the issue is to me isn't so much uh, what I was reported by, from the bike owner, uh, the bike stores is that um, the issue the. There were really no issues over riding that they needed the town to help with, um, except in the the only problem was that people didn't seem to know trail etiquette or, or the knowledge of it was not good. And they hadn't gotten a lot of report uh, complaints about bikes um, right. either, either, either way that they wanted to pass on to us. But it was just if we could do something to improve to help people understand what trail etiquette is and to just to be aware and uh, and announce yourself are the main are the main things and and speed is isn't so much of an issue except when just when when you're passing somebody i guess right so so my thought was some and so so the result of that is would be some some uh description on the entrance of trailheads that we had discussed before is probably the i think the bike guys would bike owners would real would agree that that would be probably the one of the more important so things we could do besides just increasing the general knowledge through our, our bike uh, day things that we're doing, involved in. So Chip, you, you had the same, the similar discussion, I guess, with uh, the other bike store that you went to. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so we'll park that. Did I just so, ask a question on that? Did, did they indicate at all that when they're interacting with customers whether it's a rental or a sale of a bike that they do some education on their part when they're Wait. when they're actually have a customer you know in hand so to speak because they they should know that they should know the etiquette on the trail that's a good question in the statement that was just read 
he said that they do they provide um uh some sort of like what, what was the words that he used chip some instruct they walk people through well they take them out on the trail and, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah so we i would assume that that's part of that discussion mm -hmm. that that discussion right. but that we didn't have i didn't have that okay that discussion. i mean i think that would be something you know that, if we're working in a partnership if we could encourage them i wanted to a do. single handout for the rules of the road that we can hand out the bikers, to and then gym. you can have them at the bike stores. And as someone buys a bike or gets a mm -hmm. bike repaired, we'll that. they can be given a card with the rules of the road and bike etiquette. That's right. Coming up. All right. Any more regarding Lenny's statement? Let's see. Hmm? Everybody's happy. Was there anyone? I can't read the names no. up there. Was there anyone that wanted to say anything on Zoom? Nothing in the chat. Okay. Bob, I'd just like to finish this okay. yeah. with the final statement. And this is his final sentence. It says, in closing, we have wonderful customers who are enjoying the outdoors again and loving it. Don't take that away from them. There is no intention from this committee to take electric bikes or any bikes away from anybody. Okay, let's press on to old business. Um, I think that we have a comment from oh, the okay. audience. If you could step to the microphone and state your name and your address, yes, uh, please. I'm Bob Mosier, and we moved here uh, recently, last year, building a home in the area. I'm an avid biker, have been all my life. I got to give anybody involved in the bike trails high five good bike trails i think uh, some education for the riders out there need to happen first of all you should be wearing a helmet i don't care if you get on a bike put your helmet on you can get hurt badly e-bikes that's what i have i try to keep it around 12 to 15 miles per hour and I get to the right those kind of things need to be discussed and I you know I see a lot of kids out there older folks too that don't seem to know the rules of the road stop for stop signs I mean it's not a car but darn it's a bike <laughs> And it could cause a lot of trouble for the rider. So um, I don't know how we do this, but um, I think it, the trails are pretty well marked. Matter of fact, they're very well marked. And I, I haven't seen better trails. And I, and I from Detroit originally, but I've lived in Arlington, Virginia. And they're starting to do trails, but they're not on your level. And I got to say that I'm happy with the trails. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it when I came here. I thought, holy cow, this is really, really good. And I'm, I'm pleased with it. So, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying a few points that bothers me. And I'll sit in the car when we're driving and I'll see a somebody out there riding a bike with no helmet on or not this happening or um, I happen to have, I'm like a, I'm like a peacock. I mean, when I have uh, markers, I wear a, a vest that's very, and then I have blinking lights on both ends of the bike. So I'm all for marking your bike so that you can be seen. So. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. There's no one else. We'll move on down to old business. The update, uh, the no stress bike route across town, you know, following the last meeting, it was looked into by the city. The information I got, and I've sent, sent the same stuff to you. The city has chosen not to pursue this any further and they are withdrawing the grant application because it hasn't been 
that was not properly vetted before it advanced to that point. Uh, this committee does have the option of looking at it again or restarting it at some future point. But for now, that that is essentially dead unless we opt to so what, move it forward, yeah, what, start it again, basically. What um, what what we discovered is that it the the concept of it was not properly vetted through public input and through this committee. Um, it was a concept, some committee members and myself included kind of did the ride, but then it never came back to committee and it did not go to public hearing and, and input. So um, somehow the cart got before the horse and um, the city, you know, after hearing from people, we realized that it was not properly vetted. So we did contact um, our grantor and let them know that we were pulling, pulling out of that. But if this committee wants to move forward with that project, we can, you know, we can do that with the proper notifications and, and public hearings. So thank you. Nice. Yeah, I've got a card. Do you, good, good. do you know what the, has the trail been resolved, the issue that was brought um, up at I, the last meeting? <clears throat> I was over there over the, the weekend and um, BPW was starting to work on moving the electrical box so that the path could be realigned and not on private property of that resident. That's as far as I, I know. Um, I know that <clears throat> it was um, indicated that the HOA would be putting up signs that it is a walking path. I, I did not see any signs. So to, in my opinion, the best part of that trail thing, the thing they were talking about was that cut through between Highland Acres and uh, Mariners Retreat and Seawall. So, and I guess in my mind, there's two, the two biggest issues are the moving that uh, electrical box that's right in the middle of the trail and the cutout of the sidewalk. Right. Well, the, so the cutout, the curb, cut? the curb cut will not happen because that was part of the grant. Okay. So I guess it, I would, I think that would be a u very useful for bicyclists in town to have a curb cut out there. Personally. Did you have it's, to it's not, it, it's, it's part of it's part of the the development. So well, we were, but I thought we were, so we were going to do the bike trail and that was going to be a part of that. Right? Well, you know? that was part of the problem was there's a company called Old Town Ventures, right. which was the company that developed Mariners Retreat Landing. I forget the name of it. It also owns the lot in Henlope and Acres. Is it that? that there's two lots that it goes through or two properties that that goes through. And those are both controlled by the developer. They're not public property. They never were. There was a, an agreement between the folks that were advocating for this program that thought it was a good thing that the developer would allow that to be used for the bike tra this bike route. I'm not sure that was ever put into writing or ever approved by anybody. Uh, Many had residents move in and mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. exception, and, and like the so, gentleman that spoke last time. Yeah, yeah. and one one the of the things, <laughs> both of those guys will be. Pro they probably have mixed opinions about it, but if th if there's no curb cut out, people are going to ride their bike up their driveway, down their sidewalk, onto mm -hmm. the onto the thing. So I have a feeling they would prefer a curb cut out. And so can we can we do something to motivate that? That is my question. So, what do you think, Mary? That's my my question. Before we get to that one, is Janet, what I heard you say is that the HOA is putting up signs that it's a walking trail only. When, when, and that's how it was in the plans is that it's a walking trail. So, if so that's when the case, bicycles won't be allowed on. Right. When it's turned over to the that's HOA, true. it belongs to the HOA. Right now it belongs to the developer. 
Yeah. And it's never going to. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Follow up. <laughs> yeah, please. Do you know if the the balance of the trail throughout that development is going to be marked as walking trail only? It is. As, as I understand it. Okay. okay. And that is, again, that's a HO, HOA issue. And the developer, I assume, even after the Mariner's Retreat gets turned over to the HOA, will still own the other lot yes. that it travers, traverses. I believe it's been turned over already to the HOA. That's the last time I heard. It was. Yeah. What is the other lot that you're referring to? Okay, it's uh, part of the acres side. Uh, yeah, acres part side. on the Henlope and Acres side. Yeah, Highland uh, Acres. Highland Acres, excuse me. If you go off Sussex Drive onto that piece of asphalt, mm -hmm. there is a lot that is within to the right of to the right of that. Okay, yeah, yeah, well, As you're, yeah, yeah. Right. There, it's part of it is on, on a lot that is actually part of uh, Highland Acres, right. and then it connects and it backs up, and that is owned by the developer's company. I doubt that will be turned over to the Mariner's Retreat yeah. HOA. There would be no reason for it, but. So, HOA is making, they are public walking trails. No, they're not. Yeah. They're not public. They're not trails. even public? No. no. That's what I was gonna ask. If they're private property. Private property. Private private property. Public, the HOA has the ability to make them public, either walking trails and or biking trails or whatever access to the public, like there are developments that have trails within them and they are stipulated in the HOA documents that they are public. But if they're not making them public, then they have the ability to gate them yes, and I, all in restrict. I, and that's where I, I think would, I would uh, doubt the challenge that. presents. Yes, yes. Right. Does, has that been discussed at all with anyone? I, know, not with? that I'm aware of, no. Okay. So Thank you. I think it would be useful for people to that traverse that area to have a cutout of the curb there, whether you're riding your bike or whether you're in a wheelchair or what, and to keep your people from going around this guy's driveway uh, um, as opposed to a cutout. Can we talk? So does anybody else feel that that way it, 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 and and if and if we do is there anything we can do to talk to the developer in the town so we had some money for that at some point and well i think i think that's on the the developer and, and the other trail and, has no cutouts either right so it's not right. just this that doesn't have a cutout the other one has no cut well, the long yes. one is very narrow Correct. I mean, yeah. It can't be used for bicycles. Right. But it does not have curb cuts on either end no. anyway right. for wheelchairs no or anything. No. No Correct. And once again, an entrance is right by someone's driveway. Correct. So you're going to go up that guy's driveway first and realize right. that's not the entrance right. and go back down and then go back up the right entrance. So, so I guess there is. My, my, uh, I'm sorry, Mary, go ahead. So I guess my issue on this is inclusivity in the sense mm -hmm. that we're not that it, bike versus walking is its own issue whatever but it's about it's about connecting and if if it's not open to the public and there's any interest in them restricting public access to those i think that's a rather big issue for this committee i, I I don't think that there is, I mean, I have not heard anything that that is going to be restricted as a, a walking path. Um, the sidewalks are public. Right. There is further down, if you're looking at the path standing from Seagull, there's an unfinished house and there's another lot or two and that there is a handicapped ADA accessible cut in at that end. Once those other one or two houses are completed, the sidewalk will be completed. So there is accessibility. Um, the sidewalks are, you know, free for everybody to, to utilize. It's the issue of the path and I have not heard anything that they're not going to allow it for the general public. They just want to maintain what was in the developing the plans for the development that it was not a multi-use path. If that it's open clarifies. to the public, you can walk through. There's no sign saying private property. 
and no one stops you from walking on the path. Correct. Yeah. But it's it's not under our control. It's right. not a city property. I, I'm not suggesting it's under control. I'm just suggesting that as this conversation goes forward, folks thought it was multi-use. Now it's not multi-use, but it is not. It's owned and operated by the HOA, which means they could choose that it's not public. That's correct. And and that would not be a good thing. But they have the right to do that. They have the yes, right to do that. Right I don't know what I don't know what we could do about that. That's, that's uh, all that, we could do true. is that's true. We probably could, but I don't see that happening. But back to my question about the cutout. Um, it seems like it would be useful for people that traverse that path that would cut out that had been discussed before as part of the tra of the trail thing. Um, I understand that it's that, and, and, and apparently we had funding to create a cut out there. And so now I'm question. I'm, I'm asking two questions. One is, do we think it would be useful to have a cut out there? And two, if so, what could we do to help facilitate that involving the people that live next door of it or have the biggest say probably in it as, and to the developer in the HOA? And the developer would obviously, I mean, it's their property, so that it's up to them. But as a bike committee, do you guys agree that that would be nice to have that and that something that we could like try to motivate? Well, I, I think that would be between whoever owns the property now, whether, and I don't know if it's the developer or if it's the HOA, I don't know for a fact that it's been turned over, but I think that that's a, a decision that they they need to to make. But that just sort of doesn't, I so we had planned on doing it before we had a, we had monies for it. When it wasn't, were, but it, but it wasn't properly vetted now. and we don't. That money is not there that now. Part of the, uh, we don't have that okay. now. Mm -hmm. okay. And it does not exist for us now. So I would also go ahead and say, we need to be careful. I mean, you know, you guys are the, the members of this advice here. Uh, if we have that cut out, it's like we're offering it to bikes and they don't want it to be uh -huh. used for bikes. So uh -huh. that could be a problem. Should the committee make that recommendation? Yeah. Um, it's also on private property, and you really can't overstep your authority and I'm not, force I'm private not property to do suggesting so. that. I'm I'm just suggesting that I think it would be useful for people who traverse the route to have a cutout there. And I think that we had monies before, and I thought I heard when you made that statement that it could be revisited in the future if so if it, right, it could be yeah to me, that was but, the mo that was the that, best part of that bike path was that cut but out. that has to go through the the public process process so there okay. there is as i said there is an ada accessible access to the to the sidewalk so somebody can come off the path take a left and go down the sidewalk when it's completed and have handicapped accessible okay. either entrance or discharge from the sidewalk. And the driveways so. are handicapped mm -hmm. for that matter. And, and actually the driveway aprons are not owned by the homeowner. Yeah, the city. Right. So, so, so I, I just want to, I think this might help a little bit, Glenn, and I yeah. apologize if it doesn't. If, if I'm understanding correctly, the funding for the curb cut came through the Delaware Bicycle Council Innovative Grant, which was specifically relative to the low stress bikeway. Correct. Right. Now that um, the cart got a bit before the horse, that grant money is going back to the Delaware Bicycle Correct. Council. So if it was ever to be revisited in the future, it would have to go through the grant process should it be accepted again by Bicycle Council, then you might receive funds in the future. Yes, but before we went but back to, to the writing process. the grant, we right. would but have to vet it. Exist. The yes. money has gone it's back. Gone. It's away. But yep. it wouldn't be for multi-use then, because it wouldn't be no, still be no bicycles. I right. understand. I'm more on the grant process, not the, the whether the it's multi-use yeah. or, or yes. But yeah, but like, so before the grant the process, process we've got to go through the proper process, process of even seeing right. if the trail will be acceptable. 
my own personal opinion, I don't see what we could do at this point. I really don't think there's any anything this committee could do to facilitate this at, at this point, unless we want to restart the whole process, which would be take a long time. I mean, time to have all the appropriate public hearings and actually run it through the public process the way it should be. And there's nothing in and, writing from the prior development plans that was submitted for the for the hearing on this. I went to a hearing on. No, this no, this and this it wasn't like part of the deal or something. It was just no. Nope. This was conceived by a member of of the committee here after I don't know. Well, the developer but, did put the other path in on his own. I mean, he did put these paths in. So right, but do that part was in agreement with the city somewhere along the line to get the development. That's what I'd like to know. Yeah, that's what what's I what's the question? Was I, the path part of the original agreement? I believe get, so. To get approval on that development. Yeah. Right. I, so, I believe so. Yeah. And do you have that in writing? So what what is that? Yeah. So that's what we'd like to see. Because weren't there you know, some other some it. some setback issues on the thing? I, that whole the develop developing that there was yeah. So weren't there some written? Well, I, I'm sure that if the plans passed the planning and, and zoning committee, the planning committee, and and mayor and council that that was all all vetted. I mean, this this committee nor myself was a, a part of that, but I'm sure it was vetted but properly. It, it would probably be used and reviewed if we knew specifically what agreement what the agreements said uh, surrounding the, the path uh, specifically, I guess, is that it would because I, I not to be the dead bicycle um but <laughs> um but i really think it, the, the path is going to be used and so and and if you i well we, i can we, i can certainly can talk you? to the planner and and pull those plans and she can walk me through that and i can have that for the next meeting that would be cool okay. thank you i just it. i'm sorry go ahead i think what needs to be clarified is who has control over what's there and what their plan is because they put up trails in and everybody just assumed it was free for anybody to use for whatever they wanted right before we can do begin to even think about anything that needs to be clarified what is it what is it going to be and before we could even consider anything Agreed. and whatever specific agreements were made correct surrounding those would be when, when, I, and I, I i don't know that i don't think any of us up here do so that needs to be clarified before anything can can happen because if it's if it's turns out that so. they take control of it and choose to make a decision then that would so Janet's pen was flailing furiously so he will seek out additional information i will us, talk with planet. janelle and I will and get that information. We'll pick it yeah. up next time. Yep. Thank you. Right. Okay. You're I welcome. We've spent a fair amount of time doing this. Any other comments? I thought that was a quick agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. What happened? I thought that would be a, this is what's done. It's over. Oh, All right. Okay. Um, we have a, I'm sorry, we have a comment in the chat. Okay. Which I Many a comment. Oh, many a comment. There we go. Sorry. Oh, somebody. I have one from Bill Weller from the Sussex Cyclist um, Coastal Lewis resident. Um, Coastal Lewis resident, but speaking on behalf of club members that live in Lewis. We recommend etiquette discussions about trail etiquette. Start with the city posting etiquette signs. as well as walkers. These standards could then be used to prevent such curbs from being placed in the future. Excuse me. Yes. Chairman, um, it's Jackie. Yeah, go ahead, Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Oh, uh, who is it the intern that's speaking that's reading the yes. chat? It's Julie. I don't know if he has a microphone, but it's not coming through. 
okay. what he's saying. It's it, right. it's not coming through the comments. I can, Jackie, can you right read? No, on she the can't. Screen? She can't read that. Oh, okay. Um, if you if you just scroll back up, I'll I'll read it. <laughs> Is that we'll we'll go back and read the first it's, one. May I suggest that when we read them, we took we. Do we address address the address it as we would to, to respond to the comment uh, instead of just moving through? Uh, the first comment was from Bill Weller, Sussex cyclist with Postal Lewis resident, but speaking on behalf of the club members that live in Lewis. We recommend etiquette discussions about the trail. Etiquette starts with the city posting etiquette signs speed limit announcement when passing other trail users. Thank you, Bill. We'll take that into consideration. Um, we do have some information later in the agenda on such items. Next, please. Uh, this is from Summer Crosby. To prevent future problems like this curb cut issue in Mariner's Retreat, I would suggest that your committee work with the Lewis Planning Commission to develop a better set of sidewalk pathway standards that would develop a network of appropriate pathways that traverse the city in a variety of ways to provide a low stress network to be used by bicyclists as well as walkers. These standards could then be used to prevent such curbs from being placed in the future. The opportunity to make demands like it seems this committee wants to make should have been made when the project went through mayor, major subdivision, review process with PC and LPC, I'm sorry, and city council. I can explain my comments if you want to give me an opportunity to speak. I think it's quite clear. Does anybody have any questions on that comment? No, I think it's a, I think it's an appropriate, yeah, I think it's an appropriate recommendation. Okay, and next. That's all. Okay, that's it. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, off to D2. Uh, map and outreach, start with the map situation. We are down to, how many maps have we got left now? I'm keeping 20 on hand for June 4th in case the new ones aren't in. Okay, so we are essentially out of maps. So we knew that was coming and as far as there were a lot of conversation about what to do with maps at the last meetings and how we could improve them. And that's all, it's all great, but we're crunched for time and doing all the artwork, the layout work to accomplish that is, it just couldn't happen for this summer or for bike season, which is already here. So we're, I mean, Janet and I were talking, we agreed to- Thanks order 5,000 of the exact same map we've got now to get us through the summer or at least into the summer. However, there was a some situation about that, so, that it's well, cut down to 2,500. Does it go down? Did I lose this thing? Um, so you all have a copy of the, the budget in front of you. Um, and I, I know that that's later on the agenda, that's item E1. Um, but when I was placing the order, the order as written with the um, changes in the layout to do the trifold pamphlet of the safety tips um, exceeded the budget that we have. So we needed to do some, some budget trimming. So what what I'm still working on, why is that funny? Go ahead. Um, so I, I, I had to, you know, relook at what we were ordering um, and we have the QR code coming. I hope that you'll talk about that. But um, so we were gonna order 2,500 maps and um, I'll get the, when the layout is done for the trifolds, then I will order those. What are the trifolds? The trifolds are the back panel of the map. 
that have the safety tips for bikers, pedestrians, motorists. It has contact information. Is that being done separate than the map? Okay. Yes, because it be. it's a different project. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. aware it existed. That's oh, okay. Well, we talked about it at the last meeting. It was John's suggestion. If you look at the back of, back of our current mic, Mark, the map there. Can I there just are... remind folks that I'm new and I'm kind okay. of catching up? So All before right, we no jump problem. on me, give me a minute. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> if, you look, if you look at the back of the map, there are three panels. Yes. It's rules for pedestrian I have cars. Thank okay. you. Uh, it was suggested that we spin that out to make it a, an outreach handout, basically without having to print the whole map or hand out the whole map to give that away. That's what we're looking at putting together for our handouts. And that's what we're has to be realigned, laid out. So that'll take a while to get. And, and get because the, I don't know exactly how much that's going to mm -hmm. be, because when you start working on layout, it, mm -hmm. it adds cost. So, um, so we don't know that we're definitely going with the trifold because we don't know how much it costs yet. Well, we're going to go with it. It's just yeah. a question of how many we can get. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right. And there, there was also a suggestion to have that entire back page on the city website with the map. And that, that is another layout to get all of those panels on the back going in the same direction so people don't have to cock their heads when they're looking at the computer. Right. I have a question. I'm with Mary. I'm sort of new. I, I'm not sure what's in this, the trifle, I, I hate to say. Is yeah. it etiquette and so forth? Stuff it's, like it's, it's responsibilities of bicyclists, motorists, and pedestrians well on the trail or riding the, or walking the roads so we're going to give this to the bike stores so when people rent a bike it's, they have to read it's this going, or they can't rent a bike it's going to be an educational piece so that will be handed them. out so we're going are we going to take some and give them 50 to the bike store to the bike stores that's on how many we can part, get that's part of the, pl the plan that's on how many we can afford to get that okay. would be a good suggestion so, so the plan is but, plan is education and however we can do that with as many documents as many right. trifolds as we can get mm -hmm. whether it's handing it out to bike bike shops whether it's handing it out at public events that we're going to you know be at to inform the public maybe we okay. should yeah, i'm sorry mary not dense <laughs> but so we have 20 maps left, correct? Okay, not counting what's out in the what's holders, out, what's the out map. right now, correct. And how many maps usually are distributed in the course of a summer? We, we had 10,000 for this past year, which we got at the end of June last year, okay. and we're down to- And you're down to- 20. 20. Yeah. And how much money is available to print maps? If you look at the budget under supplies office. No, you were saying there's only so much in the budget because we can only get so many maps because we're printing the trifold. So, right. So, so the how total. Many maps can you get? I, ca I can't give you an exact number because we're trying to do the layout of the trifold and do the layout of the back of the map so that when we put it on the website, all of those panels go in the same direction. But I can tell you to do 5,000 maps, 5,000 trifolds, do layout, shipping, it was over the allotted budget. What's our, bu what's our budget for that? It's right there on your sheet for supplies and for office, it's $4,050. Okay. So are the trifolds as important as the maps? I think, well, I'm- I would think they are equally important. If we're going to keep doing more outreach and handouts and hope to educate, I would expect most of the maps that go out, people look at the map. And when they're done riding, it goes in a can somewhere. Um, one thing that hopefully is related to this is the QR code, which as soon as we figure out exactly what we need to print to get them stuck where we want them stuck, 
hopefully that will reduce a good bit the consumption of maps. That's the the, the trifold contains the same information that's on the map. Mm -hmm. Except for the map. Except for the map, Except for the and map. It's, it's smaller, and and it also has the mayor on the map. Well, we can we can update that. But... And it has the low stress bikeway on the map. So the trail the trail etiquette I'll just pull it seems to be. <laughs> I, I'm trying to <laughs> to link about what we're talking about with these that. with yeah. our. There was not a low stress mm -mm. bikeway last year. Yeah. So I don't know how that got on there. Um, where, go ahead, Glenn, you were talking. So I'm thinking to go back to the bike stores. So to me, the, the, one of the biggest issues that we know we have is trail etiquette. And, and it's not a giant issue, but that's what people are saying is the problem, is, is it, a, an issue. Check, Bob. The, there are trail yes. etiquette signs so, on the trail. Right, right. So I'm, I, but I'm just, I'm thinking, so how do we improve trail etiquette? So I'm just thinking, I'm, I want to go back to a bike store guys and say, if we give you something like this, and it will help you train your people who buy and rent bikes, and that will be one piece, one little piece of that. And then that might be, you know, or is it a waste of time? And I'm, I'm going to go back and talk to a couple of that, those guys and ask them that if you, you get, if it makes sense, because isn't that improving trail like science is one way of doing it this is another way and, and getting people to read it and adhere to it is our, our challenge i guess right you can print up all kinds of things and signs and all that but you got to get people to care read them and care i'm not sure how you do that five dollar discount on renting but, a bicycle i don't know well that was the guy, yeah. So. yeah but may i ask a question it's been raised uh about the qr qr code where are you in that uh, process? The QR code yeah. is put together. And because of what Janet was explaining about the front and back of the map not being aligned on the website, and it'll take so it's ready to go with the map side of the current published map. But I don't know, and I'm not sure who knows, we're trying to figure out how do you actually take the QR code, print it on something, and put it where you want it. I think Mary can have that. Do well, that. tell us then. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, you and I talked about it. And yeah. as, as I understand, you explained to me, you were going to work with the city on well, doing that. We're trying. So a QR code, essentially, you can put it, you can put it on a label. You can put it on anything. Right. Um, mm -hmm. It can be this big. It can be an eight I, and a half by I, eleven. I understand that. Okay. My question is: Is it where is it going? Because Chip well, had said map, right. that yeah. it was going to go on the plastic map holders mm -hmm. on each of the bike racks and everywhere else. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I thought that the intent of using the QR code was to reduce the number of actual yeah. maps that are printed. That's what I thought right. too. Yeah. Right. Then people That's don't the take point. a map, they use the QR code. Correct. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That was my impression. Okay, so, so what we're trying to sort out, you put it on a label. Okay, right. to put this thing like say on the top of the map case that are out there, they have to be weatherproof labels. If you just go home and print QR codes on the labels that you put on your envelopes at home, how long do they last out in the rain? Are all the things not weather? Now, the other question is, can you put it on the back side of the plexiglass? And still be look right up. Hmm? Yeah, you should be able to without should it be? I mean, this is what we're... You can put them inside kiosks and kiosks okay, have glass the on the outside. Question. You can, we can put them inside a window and you can still okay. do it. So, right. yeah. Can we get a couple of examples and then try, try them out? Then? Yeah, we had them. So, yeah, sure. Oh. I'm sure and who has those now, Mary? Where are they? I, I don't know. I sent... You have the link and I have the link. It's the right, picture. We, we, yeah. don't, we don't have the actual physical. Yeah, if anybody label. just needs to print on something. Can't the printer or the manufacturer tell you how you do it? I mean, don't they tell you, don't they recommend what materials to use? And it's not as hard as we're making this. <laughs> so you could you could print it on this piece of paper. 
It could be this size. Right. Well, we know You're that. Right. We know uh, that. Okay. I, but what kind, I mean, the idea okay. of someone, can't someone tell us what type of paper or decal to use for outside and how to print it on? I would think you could laminate it. But yeah, I'm sure we could call someone and ask. Yeah. Because they're, they're everywhere. Yeah, so, and there are yeah. print shops right here in town right. that I bet yeah. you'd be I'm able sure to you do could that laminate for you very it, and easily. And then it's fine. Could I, could I make yeah. a suggestion? Um, there. Yeah. Send me the link, please. I will print a couple up. I will have them laminated, cut them to size, and give them to whomever. And you can go and try them on a couple of the bike stores, bike, again. bike uh, map holders. And we'll start from there and move forward. Right. Thank you. And I think there are a couple of um, comments in the chat. Um, uh, this is from Summer Crosby. If the trifold contains mostly text, wouldn't there be a way to simply post those blocks of text somewhere near the map graphic online to help convey the information without worrying about graphic challenges? Um, thank you. I will talk with the printer and see if there's a way to extract those panels and just put them on the website. Next. I'm involved with Go Forth Lewis. I'm sorry, this is Deborah Evalds. Right. I am involved with Go Forth Lewis and Lewis Lights. We use QR codes on signage for both. It is easy to insert on any signage. Thank you, Deborah. I think we've worked through that. Are there, is that it? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, so much for the printing. Any other comments about what we need to have printed? And then we'll get educated about it. All right, outreach. We covered the printing aspect of that with our trifold. Um, I sent y'all an email last night that I got last night. We have been invited by, I forget, I, mean, I can't remember the lady's name, apparently with Lewis uh, Farmer's Market. Uh, Chair Dardine, maybe? That's it, Dardine. Um, has invited us to set up a table okay. as we did in previous years at the uh, Farmer's Market. Last time we discussed this at our last meeting, we decided we did not want to go to the farmer's market again. Uh, again, you guys read the email because I forwarded it. To, I, did, I, think, I don't think I forwarded it to you guys. I forwarded everything to Janet and the committee that we were invited to do the farmer's market. Do we want to reconsider that? So what, what exactly are we talking about? A table? We're setting up a table, windows. people standing there handing out stuff, talking about bicycle and pedestrians and Lewis and safety. It's just an outreach thing that we've done for in the past. And refresh my mind on why it was it when we did it in the past, was it, very much did right. we get uh, attendance and was it, uh, does anybody here do it? Yeah. So, what did you think, Jeff? What was the what, what kind of response did you get? Oh, you set up right at the entrance to the market, so anybody coming in sees you, and there are people that do stop and would talk, and we would provide any kind of information that they were they were asking for. But you have to staff it. That's what yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And my I recollection just, of the last meeting's discussion is we thought we could get use the term bang for the buck better elsewhere. Yeah. You were talking about being out on the trail itself or setting up in the, the trailhead where you're actually going to bump into people whose primary mission is hiking and biking as opposed to going to the market. But Thoughts. I'm not opposed to saying I, I was the one who suggested that we go out on the trails. Yeah. I'm not opposed to going to the farmer's market, but again, it's it's staffing. It's one or two of us taking that Saturday morning mm -hmm. and being out there. Now we don't, we're going June 4th. We're already set up at the lot for the right. library. In the library. But like I said, I've done it. We used to do when we took over the when we became part of the committee. We decided to do the first Saturday of every month, mm -hmm. May through September. 
Oh. Yeah, it's only one Saturday a month in the past. And is it always at the same location? The, well, it depends on where the farmer's market is. Exactly. If they're it's, it's Smith Park, it's one place. Right. If they move to Shields, it's a different place. Sure. You're, we are not allowed in the market itself. We must be outside of it because we're okay. not a paying vendor. I see. What so is the bike raffle that is mentioned in the email, is that farmer's market is raffling a bicycle, a bicycle. apparently okay. and does yes. that take place at the same table as no no no, 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 no nothing we have nothing, nothing to do, do with that's us. all done by then they've been doing it for years at the end of the market or whatever they yeah. announced the winner and okay. it was in the email so i couldn't tell whether it's it was also at the a same fundraiser table though, or something so sure, yeah. So they they do that at the end of the year. They give out a bike. They, they yes. sell it to, oh, okay, because I was thinking said, maybe when the bike was produced, introduced, then it would be a big crowd and we could get some. No, they just have a bike with a sign. Oh, okay. and they sell raffle tickets. So you just like that. Okay. Yeah. May I uh, get back to my uh, question? You, you said June fourth, correct? Correct. Is and that's at the library yeah, you just correct. described, correct? Yep. And so you. Uh, I'm not real familiar with this, and you do this one Saturday each month through the summer season. Is that correct? No, the, the June no. 4th is for the kickoff for the Looping for Library, Okay, I which we, we said we would set up there. Okay, got it. Yeah, the once okay. a month was the farmer's market in the past. Now I understand. The COVID I, I mix the two, okay. So for the farmer's market thing, I guess my comment is I'd like to see what happens on June 4th, and then maybe we go back to the farmer's market if there's a lot of people in that. But related to the June 4th, if I could real quick, do we, we're not having another meeting between now and then. Are we, what's our set, what do we have, is there somewhere in the agenda where we're talking about how we're preparing or staffing for that? Are you, who, right now. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what, that's not, that's just it. Okay. okay. The general topic of outreach. Okay. Um, <laughs> since that's come up, the general topic of outreach, the next event or the first event we will be doing is Transition. the fourth in, at the library. And 10 o'clock to, I forget what, that's written somewhere. Um, set up time, I think it's 10 to 1. Okay. Um, I don't have that email in my stack of stuff. And I can dig it up. I have 10 to 1 on my calendar. Oh, okay. So 10 to 1 on the calendar. calendar. Right. And well, three of us have done it before. Bring out the table, bring out our giveaway stuff, which I'll address. We've got several boxes of giveaway stuff upstairs that are left over and from other sources. And that's about it. You go sit there and it's like being at a convention, sort of, in a convention booth. And you so this is an outdoor table, table. It's an card outdoor table. table. It's you. you have a tent or something over it? it was no, there hasn't been. If we're lucky, they'll set us up on the shady side of the entrance way. It's but... going to be a beautiful day. Oh, it is, yeah. huh? <laughs> so <laughs> Maybe. And yeah, I was going to ask for a show of hands who is going to be there on June 4th. Well, I can do an out, an out. An hour or okay. some some. Part I'm going to be time. there, but I'm at another table. Okay, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Maybe be neighbors. Huh? I met, might be right next door and can help, but. Now, uh, Tim, in oh, previous yeah. years, <laughs> the mayor used to come, some other folks from the council. Okay. And hang around. Food trucks. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Food trucks. So, whole reason to come. Absolutely. All right. So. That's, that's June fourth. Okay, I'll make sure that yeah. everyone on council knows this great opportunity. So who's who's owning? Who's doing it on our side, managing the uh, the table? They will so, provide the library provides a table and chairs. Okay, one of us probably me, depending. Well, I assume I've been asked to be two places at once, but essentially all we got to do is bring the our big banner, and figure out how to put that up. And a few couple boxes of stuff to give away. Okay. Well, I can so, help. I, I'm happy to help we to set up with you. I, if someone okay. else could, I don't know if I feel like sitting there for three hours, but if somebody else could right. jump, jump in uh, at uh, right. 11 or 12. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's not a sentence, it's a thing. I mean, if you got to leave, you got to leave. <laughs> oh, okay. um, <laughs> so really, I'll work with you to set up. Okay. Just, we'll figure it out. Okay. All right. So we've got enough people to cover that. Again, to try to finish up, what is the consensus regarding doing the farmer's market again? 
I, I think it would be a good idea since we've been invited by the, the market to come back or we have done it, whether we just do it one time or whatever, I would, I would like to think that we could at least set up one time. And if that's, that's from, if we went from eight to 10, two hours on a Saturday morning. Because that's the only time it was busy, is Correct. It? When it, it opens. The market's the busiest and early as I say. Since I can't we're commit every Saturday, but I can show up once in a while. Or so. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that's, once that's, a month that's, is what we used to oh, do is one Saturday a month. Um, <laughs> since we're busy on the first Saturday of June, how about doing it on the second Saturday of the months, June, July, and August? Does that make sense? Yeah. And I would suggest, if you don't mind, that, of course, if it's a rainy, crummy day, you just flip it to the following week instead, right? It shows some flexibility. It depends on people's availability. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course. You know, but it'll, it'll be the you know a few days before or the week before. Who's going to be around this week? Who wants who can go here and do this? Fine. Well, there's only five of us for that. So yeah. you're not going to yeah. volunteer, right? I can, but I'm not going to now. Yeah, <laughs> I can, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding, of course. I, food there too. <laughs> okay. Jim's in all that. So it, the only uh, Bob, that would be June eleventh, then correct? Yeah, I'm adding in my head. It okay. takes a while. Yeah, that would be four plus seven for eleven. Um, the only other one we've got is Juneteenth. Janet, you were going to look into that for us. Um, yeah. So. <clears throat> Juneteenth is actually going to be held on June 25th at George H. P. Smith Park from 1 to 6 p.m. Um, so it's right after the farmer's market. Um, they do have a, a setup for, I think, um, 16 perhaps vendors, and they do have food trucks. So we have another planning meeting tomorrow. And if the committee feels that that would be an opportunity to do some outreach and education, I will present that to them tomorrow and um, report back to the chairman um, who can disseminate that information. So. Who was night out originally? Was that no, this is, this is um, a first annual Juneteenth celebration. Um, Dover and Georgetown both hold them on the 19th or the Saturday before. Um, I think it's actually the 19th is on a Sunday this year. So the reason why the African American Heritage Commission chose the 25th was so as not to compete with the other two celebrations the weekend before. Um, so this is an inaugural event. Um, I think it's um, probably going to be an annual event, um, but it's, um, you know, a, a nice diversity of mm -hmm. of um people so and um they're having a couple of bands and dancing troops and whatnot so it might be a really nice opportunity for the committee to to do some outreach but i leave that to you is there still a lewis night out then yes uh, that's, that's august, so. later chief the, the first tuesday in august yeah sorry i Correct. i knew you were gulping so <laughs> so if, if that's a lot of dates just in June, July, and August, <laughs> and if we're looking at just five people, um, it, is it possible to expand and have other volunteers work the table that, that we have? I because don't, otherwise, I don't, I don't know how we that. could trying to recruit some of the city officials bicycles yes yeah, someone from arlington yep. virginia might be, <laughs> yeah. but i mean i think it's a great volunteer opportunity for folks to learn more about it and to engage with the committee because i don't think the five of us can we'll provide man. that do you want to have do you want to do you want to do some outreach one day uh, what would it take? Well, talk, <laughs> talk to bicyclists about how to ride a bike well, you know, the trail. The, the standing well, out in the hot sun. Uh, I don't want to get into arguments, but um, they pretty much know how to ride a bike. But um, kids might be interested. And um, my only thought is um, uh, on the trail, and it did come up tonight. 
What are my big could, Bono, could you come up to the microphone yeah, for us? Thanks. Yeah. What are my biggest peeves um, as an active rider, and I ride almost every day, is you could get walkers or you get uh, usually walkers and they'll walk three abreast. Mm. And ding, 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 ding. Uh, does it really phase them? Some it does. I don't like that. I don't, I try not to. I say on your left, I prefer that. I do have a dinger on my, on my handlebar, but I've gotten into almost an you know, hitting somebody because they don't know which way to go. So for, I, I didn't want to disrupt us from, the agenda item was how we're going to handle the outage, oh, yeah, which is a bill, yeah, so, I, which is, look, I could, uh, we, uh, we discuss some of these issues with people that come up to a table and want to know where to go and to ride a bike. I could and, and, uh, and, offer, uh, you know, I don't know what date. Uh, I guess I'd have to be in contact with someone on the committee. Uh, can you, can you, you want to leave your phone number or something? Sure, like that, so. I can do that. I, well, well, let's do that after the meeting, so yeah. it's not on the yeah. on the yeah, record. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Thank right. you. So those are our next items. The August meeting, the August August event, we'll plan for later. Um, okay. QR code. We pretty well dispatched that. Um, if anybody's. <clears throat> Happy we'll move down to D3 Street and Side Rock Repair Update. Last meeting, everybody was going to go out and look around and see what they found in town that we needed to try to get fixed. I assume everybody has a report to give me. I do not. I do I not. Flunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I can report on uh, Savannah Road. Way to go, okay. Chip. Way to make us look good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, That's because I'm I out there. <laughs> no. uh, no, excuse me. Did we have anything on Zoom about outreach? I see. I can't read those no. things from here. No. Okay. No. Um, I emailed this to you guys a while ago. That's my list. The um, the point being, we talked at length about that. Is find out what needs, what our thoughts are, what needs to be done to the roads, the paint, to the curbs. Compile it and get it get it to Janet to get it going through the city. How are we doing on the salary of policemen? Is there an update on that yet? I don't have an update on that yet. I... Mm -hmm. So the more you can, we might as well start sending in what we got. I would think, Janet, as that works. And as we get more. Chip, you did your homework. Yes. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I want to just talk about the downtown area really more than any, because the crosswalks are severely faded. Right. The brick is no longer looks like brick anymore. The white striping is virtually gone in many places. This is Savannah Street at Second Road. Um, Second Street is the same way. It's they blend in with the pavement. Right. And I think we need, I said citywide, they all need to be done so they pop so that people <laughs> see them. Right. You want you want pedestrians and bicycles and motorists to see crosswalks. And they need to stand out to do that. And stop lines too. So I, stop lines. I think the city usually does, um, is it Chief do you know? is it one or two um, addressing the crosswalks that maintenance does it once or twice a year. So if if you yeah. give, yeah. yeah, if you if you send me the list, I think the one thing is when you're talking about Savannah, that's a state. Right. Road. So I don't think we can touch that. But if you send me your lists, Bob and um, Chip, I will get that to the maintenance department. And I, if there are Del Dot roads right. that have crosswalks, they should all be part of the Lewis Byway. And our committee can make outreach to Del Dot to have the crosswalks. Thank you addressed. Thank you, Mary. That would be very helpful, Mary. Mary, would they, they do the sheriffs also? Um, we can have a conversation with them about the sheriffs. Okay. I don't know if anybody Mary, saw today's uh, Cape Gazette for Rehoboth, and I was just down there, and all their main streets uh, have sheriffs probably every 100 feet now on Rehoboth Avenue. I mean, it's literally... Both wow. lanes in and out of town have sheriffs on them. 
and we need those around town also, especially on the state control roads. So there are share share ugh. there are sheriffs <laughs> currently. Why was that so hard? Um, <laughs> On Savannah, and, and, they, and they need to be updated. Right. Yes. Are there sheriffs elsewhere? On Second Street, there's a couple. Second Street. Second Street would be city. Right, that's city. Yeah. That's city, yeah. So, but Savannah's right. the Anne only Marie, one with. Henry uh, told me the ones we mentioned on Gill's Neck from Savannah to the trails. We requested some on Gill's Neck. She said that is city. So the city can do those. Hmm. Assuming they, but that's what Anne Marie said. Pilot Town Road needs it too. The Delgott Road, too. Right. Yeah. Right. I thought Anne Marie said at least as far as the city limit or out to the Savannah Road Bridge, they were city streets. I, I can't speak to that. I, I, I don't, don't know. know. I, I, I think, I, Bob, I think it goes down to Rada Line. Hmm? I think it goes down it goes to Rada line. line. Well, you can put some. Yeah. You got room to put <laughs> oh, one right. or two to try to give them the point. Oh, absolutely. It'd be nice to have them to the trails. But... Absolutely. Again, make things mm -hmm. pop. Yeah. It'd be nice to have that the entrance to the trail down there marked out better. Oh, yeah, because you have and to slow it's... down and make that quick turn, and you don't know, you know, the signs there for the bridge, and it's not. And when you come out of that trail, it's kind of dangerous too. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. So, if I could just ask, if everybody send to me there in in writing, so that I doesn't get lost. So, and I will forward that to maintenance. Hey. Thank well, you. That's your homework Anything for this week. City, I'll send to you. Send to yeah. our way. So that's your homework for this week on that score. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody else have anything else for D4 reports from guys that went out and talked to the bike shop owners? I think we dispatched that with Lenny Richardson's comments. I just have one question on that, and, and it was brought up by Bob, and I just want to reinforce it. I know a lot of the bike shops in Rehoboth have very large signs. Um, speaking to uh, the, the need to wear a helmet. Mm. And I noticed that our stores here, I don't think have those same signs. Um, in conversation with the bike stores, are they talking about helmets at all, reinforcing those? Do you know? Did it come uh, up? I didn't have that conversation. Okay. Well, they're not required in Delaware, right? Over 12? Oh, 18. 18. 18. 18. Under the age of 18 is required to wear a helmet. But We'd still like everybody to wear a helmet. <laughs> there are these signs that you're speaking of in the windows of the they stores. Are. Is pretty that much they? this big. They sit in the window of them. Any idea and where they got them? I'm sure they had them made. They're just so, signs, like I regular see. ones. But yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. But I do know that, you know, I've talked to Brian, to Brian and uh, Don Long, but down at Lewis Cycle. And uh, Don's been sponsoring some um, Moonrise. Up, up to the state park and it's required at all rides you're helmeted right. and yeah. lights front and back great so they do promote things that's now, great they do not have a sign but they do promote it verbally that's yeah. great all right down to b5 helmet ticket program uh king's ice cream and dairy queen are on board uh where we are with that gets back into printing i have never seen a helmet <laughs> ticket I have no idea what they look like. Uh, Chief, what do we do? So I thought I could find some. Yeah. I can't, we're going renovations. Yeah. I think uh. a lot of stuff has been stored. <laughs> yeah. A couple of guys who worked for me said, so, oh yeah, I have them from years ago. I'm not, I haven't lost hope that that can happen. Mm -hmm. But I think those could be printed in house too. I'm just, I, I, I am probably at a loss to know, is it, is it something you could, Put an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper in the printer. You print four of them. Sure. Yeah, it's about it, that. And then you run it through the copier. About that size. And yeah. I don't know what verbiage you would want on it. Do you want the officer to sign it? I'll let you know yeah. with a quill pen. It's, it's about that size. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have one. This is one of the old ones. Oh, yeah. It's it's like there is one. Yeah. It's like one does exist. We can. Uh, that's actually yeah. this is sure. this is one of the old sure. ones though. It needs to be updated. Yes, yes. Right. You are a hell of a resource, you know. <laughs> so who gives the money? Yeah, what else do you have in there, Chip? Uh, <laughs> okay. Seven oh three. Oh, seven yes, three four. Yeah. So can you yeah, we can uh, can your department take care of printing four. that stuff or seven seven? Uh, no, Janet, okay. Janet will and yeah, right. what am I doing? You're gonna print the <laughs> ticket for your guys too. Is that, do, do you, 
Chip, do you need a copy of that or are you? No. Do you that, that's, that needs to be updated. Okay. All right. So you don't need that back. No, I do not. Okay. No. Didn't we used to give the helmet? Okay. You're most welcome. Like, awesome. Thanks so, for coming in. Mm, years and years and years ago. Has the committee said you want to go back to this? Whatever. I mean, whatever you guys would want. James I mean, and Dairy Queen is. They're on board. Yeah. Okay. How and, does it work? Yeah. So, congratulations. You've been caught wearing your bicycle helmet. This ticket entitles you to a free ice cream cone. At you know the local things, uh, so police officers when they're out on the street and you know have time. It's not all the time, obviously, but see a family with the uh, you know properly attired helmet and all following the rules, kind of stop them at a you know an intersection, a corner, whatever, and say, hey, you're getting a ticket. Good for police outreach. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah, and uh, they just take it to either place and. Obviously, you know, mom, dad, other teenagers buy ice cream when the kid's there as well. So I'm sure they make out well, but it's a, it's a great tool as well for them. Do we do anything for, since it's a law under the age of 18 that you wear a helmet? Are we well, rewarding you for wearing your helmet? That's what that's this, this is. is. Mm -hmm. So we're rewarding you for following the law? Correct. Right. It's for small kids, though, to reinforce. We're positive reinforcing positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> but what is there age limit on? What if you're not? You're in oh. <laughs> we target you. <laughs> Twelve and under, probably. All right, so that'll be taken care of with rolled into our four thousand fifty dollar printing budget. Uh, uh, no, that's going. That's got. going that's on the big copier in the okay. uh, office. Very good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, D6, status of HR 19, that's just a throwback to what we've been talking about before. As I said in the information email I sent you guys, I tried to get information from our uh, state rep, never got a response. If you root around in the city website, or excuse me, the state website, you can find out about the status of a bill, and it hasn't changed. <clears throat> Nothing has changed on that. I think Andrew said he might, well, he's not here, and I was going to see what he could dig up from uh from ernie and uh, steve but nothing ever happened so as far as i know it hasn't progressed is there a number on that bill yeah 19. a bill H H H H H H or hr i forget if H i'm in washington or here but it's h something 19. right okay thank you all right i'll i'll jog his memory on that yeah so, all right so much for old business New business. For the first time, at least in my tenure on the committee, the committee members are now seeing the budget. What do we want to do with it? I'm not sure. But now at least we know how much money we have and where we can spend it. So we can spend $750 on professional services, clerical, secretarial, I guess. But so that, that that's basically um, for the meetings. Okay. So that is is so that we are with FOIA and making um, right. written record of the public meeting. Right. So there's really not leeway in that. Okay, and seven hundred and that's paying tech that's and equipment. Jackie. Jackie. Yes. Got it. Yep. Okay. What about the thirty forty miscellaneous? Well, that's. Miscellaneous. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's, can I go to maps then? So, well, Tim, yeah. refresh my memory. Uh huh. So CS is contracted services, PG and CO. Purchased goods and the CO is the one that. Oh, I see what you're, the not, code you're talking yeah, about. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, CO. There isn't CO on a lot of them. There isn't any others on this page. No. I, I you know a thing though, not a typo, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what CO is. What does CS stand for? Contracted services. So it's contracted. So services. we are we contract for clerical services to do the meeting minutes. Could that be outreach too or something? Contract outreach. No. Um, miscellaneous could probably be outreach, okay. but there's 700. 
Pardon? supplies, tech, equipment. Seven seven hundred and fifty is the professional services. There's no wiggle room in that. Right. Then there's a supplies, tech, equipment right. for seven hundred. No. Yes. For so down below. For, what do you, what do you, what do you what Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were going directly down there. Uh -huh. I am. Down the fifty-three fifty-two oh, is the line number. Jones's is four thousand fifty. Great. And then seven hundred. Yep. Oh, amended. Uh, Do we know what the seven hundred is for? That's for twenty twenty-three. It's for technical supplies and equipment. Have any technical supplies? Do we know what that is? Oh, okay. It's just as, right. as an example, in the past we've done bell giveaways. We've still got probably 50, 60 bells upstairs. Um, most of them were provided by Brian up at the Lewis right. Cycle Shop, but I think at one point some he was getting a very good price, and we helped purchase some. That would come out of miscellaneous. Or could that come out of equipment? It could probably come out of miscellaneous. Okay, I'm just thinking of yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it looks like maybe there the was QR seven. Maybe code can come out of that then. We're going to put them on the holders. So like that a... could probably come out of. But then you the, can shift. Se the technical supplies and equipment. Right. Now we'll have more money towards maps and right. handouts. Because last year you spent almost $700 on whatever was that tech and equipment. Because it's in the actual. Um, 600. So if you look at fiscal year 2022, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The adopted budget was 1500. Mm -hmm. In mid year, it was amended to 700, and that's based on what they're seeing as current expenditures between that time. And then what was actually spent was 693. Right. So then we just don't know what that 693 was spent on. I can I can look it up if the committee would like to see it. So who put the extra three thousand in the budget for us? That was nice. The city. First, first the city time we had miscellaneous. And was there was there an expectation of what that was? That was just that was just miscellaneous. So mm -hmm. it's the, okay. It's an okay. odd amount though to just. Mm -hmm. So that was under the CO. Is that you stand for city then? City, you know, it's, city mm, outreach. No, I'll I'll look it up. I'll look it up and find it for you. But I think you have an idea. Yeah, I don't, if anybody has questions, they can. I don't know how important it is. We know all the details right. of what happened in years past. I don't know that it's that important. We make you go rooting around and digging through history. I mean, we've got an idea of what we've got for the right. first time, and we have some some concept of a group as to what what we can do with it. Which for you I think guys last that are year's new, would be helpful. Hmm? I think last year's expenses would be helpful. But it's not we have the numbers well, here. It was. It's 2021. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get. All right. The other, the last three items were um, actually a subset. The way I, I guess I didn't, didn't kind of write this up clearly. These three items were all items to be that came out of a meeting that I had with our, our two council liaisons and Ann Murray back in April. Um, it was nothing special. She called in all committee chairs. Um, the main topics to be spoken about. One was we need to discuss and think about whether the committee would be more effective if we met monthly as opposed to bi-monthly. And you throw into that, if you look at our charter, well, I guess it's bylaws here. Uh, essentially, as long as I've been on the committee, we've never met in July, which is written into our bylaws as that's optional. So at some points we were going four months with never having gotten together and talked about anything. For me, especially the older I get, that's a long time to try to remember stuff. Two months is a long time. It's a discussion. What do you so think? We, so related to our budget, does this meeting cost us we, as a committee? How much does a meeting cost? 
Pardon? Is, I, I'm not sure is, what the there's question is. Is there a cost to this meeting? Yes. In, in our in our budget? Of, in, yes, it's the, the clerical. So if we double the professional the meeting, services meeting every month, then how, what will that have impact mm -hmm. have on our budget? Uh, my okay, so that will bump our budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't see a real strong need for us mm -hmm. if we do stuff in between, and especially if it has, it, it, I'd rather give out a bike helmet to somebody than have another meeting, I think, mm -hmm. personally, but. I agree I with wondered. you, but I do think there's value in what Bob said is that if there is no meeting in July, then this would be our last meeting until <clears throat> August or September. September. September, which is a long time. Yeah. Maybe we in the summer, then we we meet more more regularly. That might be. Well, it's optional to dispense with the July meeting. Oh, it's not okay. It's Go not. Ahead. It's not set in stone. It's it is optional right, right, right. to dispense right. with it. Yeah. Chip, what do you think? I think meeting in July would be a good idea. What about meeting every month as opposed to every other month? Well, he's thinking, John, you can answer. <laughs> I don't think we really need to meet okay. every month because we really don't control that much. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have any authority. We're not putting out bids and it's just tracking things that we suggested. So I don't know if we have to do that every single month. Yeah. Okay. The current plan is every two months, right? Right. Yes. Okay. So do we need a meeting, meeting next month? Or do we wait till July? I guess is the question. If we're going to meet more, per, per, more, it would seem like in the summer months would be in, in the time to do it. Um, but I'm not sure that what's uh, outstanding that we would really need to address next month. So I'm, I guess I'm don't don't need every. I would like to propose. We think about instead of saying every month that we're always open to a special meeting in in a month that we're not scheduled to meet okay. if we've met like tonight and realize that there are some things that are well can we get technical active. support can you have a meeting without a certain amount of notice you have to have public you don't have to publicize it long? well you oh, do yeah. you do have to it, the agenda has to be posted um according to foia and that has with within seven days of the date of the meeting um and then we would it has to be you know it it's in person and via zoom um so we do need to have the technical assistance so you have to have the availability have, of, of the room correct yep Right. And you'd have no, to I'm schedule just saying, Jackie if we too. had a lot right. going on, we might say, you know what, we should meet in June, or we should meet. In June. Right. I, I would say that if there was a lot going on, if people felt like we needed a meeting in June, we would try and set that right now um, so that it's not, a, you know, emails back and forth um, trying to, to get that together. So um, I'm in favor of July, like Chip. Okay, well, I can just make the decision. We won't skip the July meeting. Okay. okay. So you will have a meeting in July. Is that what I just heard? Okay. Yep. Yes. We're yeah. not going to skip the July meeting. And I like the theory as necessary. We'll decide if we need to meet in a month and we'll call a special meeting for right. the following month. I mean, I mean, so if I if I can just put this on the record, then the next meeting would be um, Tuesday, July twenty sixth. Thank you. You're welcome. And at six o'clock, same six location, right? Yes. If this room is in use, are there other options? Sure. Yes, the the Rollins Center. Okay. Yep. <laughs> but I will. I will. Um, get this on the calendar right okay so that that date doesn't get well, we taken could, for anything else could we ratchet back to pure zoom meetings if there's nowhere else no that's not allowable no okay. just to clarify one thing what um, mary was saying jim if we were to want to have a special meeting mm -hmm. what is our time frame that we have to say so let's just say we on june 4th we go to the Lupin for the library and we're set up and then we think well maybe we need to have another meeting 
can we, what's the process for doing that is what I'm asking. Well, I think um, the chairperson would reach out to me um, and I would look at the city calendar and see what's available. We'd have to have the agenda and that would have to be posted a minimum of one week before the meeting. Right, I, I know that part. I'm right. just trying to figure out in case we figure that we actually need it. Right. Then we could have like Mary saying, we say, okay, we need to get together and- It's about a two week span then. Or, yeah. Okay. Or less than that actually, but yeah. Well, at least 10 days though, if you have to have the agenda set. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the agenda is about what seven days. Prior? Seven days is the trigger days for yep. the public notice. To get the yep. Schedule. Right. Okay. You, mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. All right. The other two items that were the bigger ones we talked about was communications, actually between the committee and the city staff and the mayor and council. We discussed that and how it is greatly improved with Janet sitting there. Um, anybody want to comment about anything? And everybody's got to go to a training program on June 8th. It's our meeting in June. Yeah, and you want to tell the committee <laughs> commission. If you want to tell them where it's going to be held? I don't remember. That's uh, it's Rollins. Is it see the Rollins Center? It's a library big room, isn't it? It's um, it's it's located, it will be held at the Rollins Center and it's from four to seven. Um, and the, the agenda is not um, complete yet, but some of the, the issues are, um, or topics of discussion are things like FOIA, terms of service, you know, that sort of thing. Um, your, your liaison for, um, council, your staff liaison, that sort of thing. So something about intercommittee cooperation, like if the, like we want something a bike path and just parking involved at the same time. And yeah, I, I off the top of my head, John, I I don't know, and it's it's not finalized at this point. So this is for the whole path, all the committees. This is for all of the committees and commissions. We have we've had a lot of new members of committees, all you know, many committees over the the past year. Um, so rather than, as Bob had said, Anne Marie had met with the chairperson of each of the committees, um, with the representative from council, just to kind of set the stage for, for moving forward and for, for this training. One other thing I will throw in, it wasn't on the agenda for peer discussion. We talked last meeting about some of the past things we did where bicycles illegally parked or not illegally parked, but sitting on the sidewalks and all. We have had these little hang tags to put on them. I think everybody's got one to look at. Basically, it's telling, it's used in downtown, showing them where to go to find a bike trail or a bike path, uh, excuse me, a bike rack. Um, in the past, the uh, committee members, if anybody else was interested, just put them on a bicycle and walk away. I don't particularly enjoy it. I don't want to get in somebody's, somebody getting in my face because you give them a piece of cardboard. But we've got a bunch of them upstairs. I don't know that we need to have any more problems. Dennis Crawford, the head parking guy, I spoke to him the other day. He had, he had had these sitting in his guy's pockets. And on a time basis, it's like, if he, you know, if they're not writing real tickets, they can put this on a car. Everybody good with that? Do the, the police officers have these too? Uh, we could have access. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt you're going to get that, that uh, done. That's why we've used parking and forth. If they're on the ground a little bit more, they're out walking uh, a little bit more. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> it's just probably not going to happen through the certified police process, but definitely the uh, parking enforcement. You could give a real ticket, couldn't you? That's true, too. 
I think there's a there's a question from Summer Crosby. Do we have enough bike racks in places that work for bicyclists? How does the city determine where to place the racks? Um, I, you know, I would say that we do have a very large bike corral um, down at the corner of Gills Neck and Savannah. Um, we have put on the map um, on the website, the location of the bike racks. I think we're, you know, always assessing the use of the bike racks and locations for potential bike racks. Um, I think the, the ones that get a lot of use are at Mary Vessels Park and Second Street. Um, we have bike loops on the sidewalks at Second Street, which I do see um, frequently in use. Um, so it's it's ongoing assessment. And I will think I could add also that there's a rack at Roosevelt Inlet, unless it has been removed. No, actually, we added one. Oh, is it? There yeah. was one, and and we added another add when another we right. when we did the parking lot, and there right. is one down at uh, Savannah Beach and Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker Beach too. Yep. Right. right. And the trailhead. Proper yeah. the suggestion that if we want to get the big bike corral to get more use. It would be a lot easier if there weren't construction vehicles in it. Okay. Much of the time, there's always, not always, but very frequently, somebody's parked their pickup truck in there for something or other. And do you think that's a BPW truck? I, that's, I, I haven't know? studied it. I mean, when they were working on the bridge, you couldn't even get a bicycle in that lot okay. if you wanted to. It's that's a good point. But it's a good point. The, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'll make note of that. Makes it less attractive oh, right. to the bicycles. Uh -huh. All right, anybody have anything else? Yeah, exactly. Just, Any more comments? I, I, just, I think that it would be better if we had more bike racks and that we bet it'd be more convenient for bicyclists. I know that we have limited space. So I guess my, my desire is to keep that as a as an ongoing thing can we you know can we can we squeeze in one of those low they have these real small ones you know they're just like little crescents that uh, mm -hmm. that can go a lot of places the more bike racks you have around town the more people are going to use their bikes and the less likely they're going to be throwing it in front of a door you know the people like to park their car on the street and next to the next to the place they're going so to bike bike so i guess i'll as as part of my action i'll try to find some as i walk around town try to identify places but it would seem that that would be a good like goal for the committee to have uh, we have looked at it in the past. Yeah. I mean, a year or two ago, we suggested putting one in, well, there was only the one city parking lot at the time behind right. the shops on the south side of Second Street. And that uh, kind of yeah. fell off somewhere. That's disappeared well, in the megahertz somewhere. Are you speaking actually of the parking lot that's on the third street? You enter from third yeah. street. Is mm -hmm. that what you're speaking of? That is, I'll speak to Janet about that after the meeting, but I believe that's. I believe that's uh, been identified as not only a location, but that a rack would be installed there. I'll speak to you. Uh, about uh, all right, do, because I was reading the second half of um, Summer Crosby's. Um, I didn't see it below there. How would bicycle, bicyclists suggest additional comment. locations for bike racks? I would um, actually encourage the public to come to the pub. You know, these meetings are public. They can come here to the Bike Ped Advisory Committee and make, make suggestions. Um, and then the last part of it is that you can fit a lot of bikes in a single car parking space, which... We know, unfortunately, we have limited parking as as well. Yeah. So um, those are all good points that we can certainly take under consideration. So that one specifically, I mean, we we want more bikes and less car, fewer cars. So uh, that's that to me. That's I guess the, it's, I guess the, the merchants might have a different view on that. <laughs> but um, well, as well, as cost of, and I know it's not it's not the purview of this committee, but I think with as gas prices rise, 
not only and, and with congestion, we absolutely want people walking and biking, but I think we're noticing more people out on scooters too. And if you look in, in some other towns, they have some very specific scooter parking, um, which gets them kind of off of taking up some. Is it the electric space. scooters you're speaking of? Is that? Yeah, like the, the yeah. scooter you see folks right. on, the, on the road. Yeah. So yesterday, um, the city cut the ribbon on the Lewis line. Um, which is another way to, you know, move people throughout the city. And um, I believe that there is a possibility of getting bike racks to install on the front of, of those um, vehicles. So just a few other things to keep in mind, and I will keep the committee posted on that. Anybody okay. got anything else? Uh, no. Oh. No, I was just clear. <laughs> Somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion to conclude our meeting for this evening. I I second. Second. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, our friend Bob left before I could get his phone number. So uh <laughs> <laughs>